Hello ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. My name is Lindsay Fisher, I'm the Principal Ballet Master for the National Ballet of Canada and it is my pleasure to tell you a few things about La Sylphide. This production is by Johann Koberg with music from Harold Lovenschgold. The production is a reimagining of the existing Bourninville and in many ways it's very similar. Most of you will know that La Sylphide is the story of a prosperous Scottish farmer who gives up his wealth, his position, and his very real fiancé to pursue an idea, a woman who appears out of nowhere, who is ethereal, and who unfortunately he cannot touch. And the difficulty or the complications of this relationship only appear to James after he renounces his fiancé, follows the Sylphie to the forest, and then discovers that not only can he not touch her now, he cannot touch her ever, it will cause her to die. There is an evil witch, Madge, who thinks to exploit this situation. And she tells James, oh no, no, no. It's not true that if you touch her, she will die. She just doesn't want to be caught. But if you wrap this scarf around her, she will be so entranced by it that you can sneak up on her and you can hug her and kiss her. Indeed, James shows the sylph the scarf, but as it touches her body, her wings fall off, she goes blind, and she has only enough breath left in her body to say to him, I warned you, I could not be touched, but I loved you more than all the world. This moment when you held me, it was worth it. And she dies. And then Madge takes the prostrate James, turns him to look into the distance, and he sees Effie his fiance being married to his rival Gurn. And he says to Madge, he says, you, you did this. She says, I? Oh no, you. And Madge triumphs. It's a great story, but it has some difficulties for the modern viewer, mostly because although the version current throughout the world is authentic Bourninville, it is not all of what Bourninville put on the stage. Some music has been lost, some choreography has been lost, and Johann Koberg was lucky enough to rediscover some of this music with Bourninville's handwriting on the score, here this should happen, here Gern says this, here Effie says that. And Johann was able to use these guidelines to restore some very important dramatic points. For example, in the first act, there is now a scene after James first meets the sylph, when he wakes up some of his friends who have, you know, fallen asleep in a drunken stupor. And he says to them, did you see? Did you see that beautiful woman? She was here. I think she kissed me. And of course, already they think he's a little bit strange. And so James already feels a little bit different and a little bit cut off from normal humanity. He sees things, he experiences things that other people don't see. So already we have a little taste of his character that maybe he doesn't make this decision to follow the sylph just because he's a crazy man. No, he's, he's a dreamer. Then Johann found some music in the second act uh, where Bourninville had indicated that they should actually discuss the sylph and James, that they should discuss her incorporeal nature. He says to her, are, are you a sylph? She says, yes. He says, are you a woman? Well, she doesn't really want to answer that question. But she says to him, you know, I cannot be touched. He says, one kiss? She says, no, don't look with your eyes. Look with your imagination, look with your heart. That's where you're going to find me. And James doesn't really accept that. But at least now we don't feel that the sylph has played him. She is an innocent, naive creature who, as she tells him, has watched him grow up, has watched him hunt in the forest, and she feels she's protecting him from, from the crass corporeality of Effie. She, I'm going to take care of you. Come to the forest. Come to where I live. There you can follow your dreams. You just can't have human relationships. And so I think in this way, the tragedy of James having given up human relationships for something that he destroys through his own lack of patience through his own failure to understand, failure to believe what he dreams about, I think this actually makes the tragedy much more real, much, much more something that we can understand. Oh, I've done this. I have made this mistake. I have not listened when people told me what the price of my dream would be. 
so I'm really excited about this production. Um, I think Johan has an extraordinary grounding in Bourneville and every um, addition that he's made and every comment that he has to tell the dancers about how to make this choreography look as though it were created for them today is you know worth it's, it's absolutely priceless information. So I hope you enjoy the production as much as I do and uh, again thank you very much for being here.